Welcome to part two of Bounty Hunters. In the last episode, we built a huge Frag AA cram den. Wait, is Onyx Watch even a loud frag? In all seriousness, let me catch you up on some of the changes. So first of all, uh, this is the old version on our right here. This is the new version on our left. Last time when we were building this for frag, we were optimizing for fragments. You can see we got 22 fragments. So this time we're optimizing for explosive radius. So you can see down there, I've got 16.3 meter radius. Unfortunately, higher radius comes from higher packing. So you can see I've got a lot of payload compactors in this one, whereas the previous one didn't have any payload compactors. That's so we can pack more and get more radius. Also, we have explosive pellets in the side here, where there were previously metal blocks. It's kind of unfortunate that we were kind of losing out on the 3D cram uh, material per volume. You can see the material per firepower is up to 417, and that is from 377. So it's not that much worse, but it is it does hurt to have these explosive pellets exposed on all these sides. Uh, so you can see these ones are only connected to three packers, which is pretty bad, but what can you do? But I did manage to actually reduce the reload time from 9.53 seconds down to 8.46. And interestingly, the uh, gauge increasers I found were actually worse with this version. So it's now reduced from 1100 millimeters to just 1000 millimeter. If I look on the back side of them, you can also see I've gotten rid of some of the local weapon controllers in favor of more pellets. And on the side, I've got the, the stone and weapon controller uh, zigzag and that's for a little bit of EMP reduction in case we get hit with EMP and I still have four weapon controllers they're just laid out slightly differently however this is not all the changes that will be done because I've since realized that this top layer here is actually supposed to be wood on our final design and if this is wood that means we're not going to have very much protection for uh, this top layer of components so we're going to have to redesign this again in the future Moving on to our other turret, I haven't actually gone through to make this HE yet, so we're going to have to work on that in another episode. But I did get some suggestions from the Discord server to change up the style of this gun. So first of all, we have a two-barrel variant, which some people in the Discord wanted to see. You can see it here. Also, you can see that I've got some interesting changes on the side panel. Uh, so you can see this is the original. This was ripped straight off of the Jormungand. This one, I've obviously taken some creative liberties with it and made this big cross formation. And this one, the cross is kind of more worked into the wheel. Honestly, I don't know which one I like better. I think they're all pretty good. So leave a comment down below which one is your favorite. We've got the original number one over here, number two, and number three. Comment down below what your favorite one is. Now it's time to move on to the meat and potatoes of this episode. On the left side we have the Jormungand, on the right side we have the Bastion. I have those there as a uh, reference while I'm building and I'm just gonna take you through my usual building process. So I always start out by laying out the guns um, and in some ships I also lay out the engines but in this ship I did not do that because in theory, there's going to be so much internal space, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but in ships where I am going to build it rather dense, I usually lay out the all of the internals. Like, all of it. Like, AI, ammo, uh, engines, everything. But in this one, since I'm, in theory, going to have a ton of internal space, because that's Onyx Watch's thing, I did not do that. So you can see I laid out the guns, and then using the guns, I kind of use those, like, stencil blocks to just figure out the kind of shape. I went. I worked my way backwards to the, like what I call like a feature point or like a focal point, and that's the big wheel, the big spinning steam wheel that you can see on the Jormungand over there. And so, I've built that in this as well. Right there, you can see I'm prefabbing and replacing the whole thing. That's just to shift the whole structure a couple of blocks. I realized it was like a block too high or a block too low, so I just prefabbed the whole thing, delete it, and then paste it back. And you can see. I'm pressing backspace to turn off the connection rules. That's why everything's pink. Anything that's pink is not connected. 
uh, but isn't disconnected because of connection rules. And also the guns are not pink, even though they are not connected. That's just a weird quirk of from the depths, like a bug, I guess. Uh, you can see I'm just redoing those sides. Now that I have those steam, uh, what do you call it, wheel wells uh, finished, I'm marking out the shape of the front of the boat. And you can see I've begun also marking out the space I'm going to need for each of the guns. You can even see I put some crenellations in there. And again, I'm using that technique of prefabbing the whole thing and shifting it forward because I realized it wasn't quite lining up with the front of the boat. Now, in this time lapse, you can actually see the old gun didn't fall off. I think that's a issue with From the Depths multiplayer. Um, I'm actually using multiplayer to record this like from a third person perspective. And I didn't realize when I was building because it didn't look this way when I was building, but the sh the guns that snap off like aren't snapping off for some reason. So uh, yeah, this, the front gun is like duplicated there. That's just a visual bug. You can ignore that. So you can see I'm really taking my time and trying to work out the details here, but unfortunately this version uh, is not very good. I made a lot of pretty serious errors in this version of it, so you're going to see that I'm going to redo pretty much the whole thing later on. But that's why we have um, the delete button. <laughs> you can see on the left side there, I actually put this front gun on the Jormungand over there just to see how it looks. I realized that the front gun of this and the front gun of the Jormungand are actually the same size. And so what I just did there is delete the entire front section of my ship. And I just copy and pasted the front section from the Jormungand. Um, I guess it's kind of cheating. <laughs> Not entirely original. My bad. But I'm going to make some significant modifications to it in just a moment. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually lowering the front gun and what I'm doing and the reason for that is actually something that was called out in the discord again by the keeper of the lore it was mentioned that because these turrets are very tall they're gonna be kind of awkward and kind of like sticking out on top of the thing a lot you can kind of see the Jormungand the turret is actually blocking the turret behind it, and that's actually with it sunk into the deck, I believe. It's actually sunk into the deck uh, a little bit. But what I'm doing on my ship is I'm actually sinking it into the deck on purpose. I'm building like a, a well for it to sit in. Kind of like another turret well, but without a neck. Um, and we'll see that in a moment. You can see I'm just going up and down the side, just making passes, smoothing it out, trying to make it flow nicely. You can see I'm just deleting things, putting them back. And actually I realized that mirror mode wasn't working there, that's what that last uh, prefab was. I realized mirror mode wasn't working so I deleted everything and replaced it with mirror mode at the active. Now I'm beginning work on the superstructure of the ship, and just like in the Jormungand, you can see the superstructure kind of slopes upward from that front uh, turret well, which is actually raised above the rest of the deck. So that's exactly what I'm building here, uh, and that's also mimicked on the right side in the Bastion. Not as much on the Bastion, actually, now that I'm looking at it. But we're just building up that raised section that is just in front of that uh, secondary gun. Uh, and you can see a little staircase there. It's kind of hard to see. It's kind of small. This is only my fourth FTD video, so if you have any feedback about the video or about how I'm recording this kind of stuff, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I love reading the comments, and thank you. You can see directly behind the turret, I'm building a gateway. I'm using a duct, like an alloy duct um, decoration to make a sort of portcullis at the entrance to this uh, castle's keep. A lot of building for me is experimentation and seeing what sticks. So you can see I kind of moved on to another section in the back there and now I'm just adjusting where the gun placement was because uh, I didn't quite like how it lined up before. So 
especially in the early stages of design, I tend to just kind of build and then take a step back and look at it for a little bit and then build some more and take a step back and look at it. You can see I'm deleting things that I already placed. Um, I've just made the outline of where I want the superstructure to be, so it's kind of curving around those turrets, as you can see. Uh, so the turrets are nice and snug in their little coves. And now we're on to day two, because this is actually a two-day build. Um, sometimes, you know, you just get tired and you just gotta take a break, so that's exactly what I did. Now, I, you can see I'm continuing to work on the superstructure. I'm just rounding out those cubby holes where those turrets sit nice and snug. Uh, I'm putting some crenellations on top of that wall you can see there. And now I've decided to fill in the deck so that it look, would look a little bit nicer, you know, give more of that castle ship feel. And then I once again spawn in the Jormungand for a reference. Uh, as I'm building the crenellations that go on top of the steam rollers, I was thinking about how I'm going to incorporate this ballista into this. And the Jormungand actually has the ballista on top of the steam propellers, uh, like pretty much in the same placement. So that's what I was looking at for a reference there. And I'm just filling in some more of the floor, filling in more of the superstructure. You can see the way I like to build up your superstructure is starting at like the front and uh, really just shaping it like in a two-dimensional sense down the hull. And then I like to go to the next layer on top and do another layer on top of that. So you can see at the front, just above where I had the portcullis earlier, I'm building these two like watchtower type deals. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going for there, but we're just experimenting, seeing what sticks, you know how it is. I don't really mind the look of that, um, but I'm also imagining in my head that this is going to be very like front heavy, very loaded on the front, and very tall, uh, because it being an anti-aircraft vehicle, I figure it wants to be, you know, close to the enemies that it's firing at, essentially. Um, but I just imagine it being very tall, having less deck space, means that it's less of a target for bombing. Um, and that's kind of my design philosophy going into this. So you can see I'm really front-loading that front section. I'm really getting it nice and tall. I'm putting those pillars there because I want kind of an overhanging um, front cabin. And you can see I just prefabbed that uh, control room from the Jormungand. Uh, just copy and pasted it right on top. And then I'm just going to work to integrate it into the design. So you can see I'm just changing, doing minor alterations to it. Uh, working those pillars in look, with those nar nice archways. I think it looks really cool. And on the front, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but I gave it a nice big uh, glass window in the same style of the other windows that are on the Jormungand. And working on adding decorative doorways and staircases, etc. in the superstructure. Now it's finally time to move on to the back of the ship. So you can see I'm copy and pasting the smokestack from the Jormungand onto the back there because I need that somewhere. And now I'm just going to start etching out the shape of the back of the ship. And what I realized is that the way I had the guns before just ain't going to work. <laughs> so I'm going to have to redo it. So you can see I start out by etching out the outline of the exterior of the ship. And then I made the slope up to the top part of the ship. And now I'm just filling in the details. I really wanted to have two smokestacks just like the Jormungand, but I didn't really have the space and I didn't really want to put them right in front of each other just like in the Jormungand, so what I decided instead to do is to put them side by side, uh, and I figured that just makes it a little bit more unique from the Jormungand. Maybe you can recognize the ship a little bit from further away by the shape of it, and overall I'm pretty happy with that. You can see I'm adding the secondary weapons in again. This time I've spaced them out better so that they will actually fit back there. And now I'm adding crenellations to the top of the rear wall. After filling in the floor in the back section, this ship is really starting to come together. With the back of the ship essentially done, it's time to begin working on the very center of the ship. I've saved the very center for last. I've already finished the front, already finished the back. 
So I'm just filling in this middle section. I've swapped over to this other view because it's kind of hard to see from the far away perspective, but as you can see, I'm just smoothing out the steam uh, wheel well into this back uh, watchtower type thing going on here and filling in the deck with wood. It's kind of hard to see because that's going so fast, but I've got this interesting little bridge going over top of the this like hallway going down the middle and back of the ship. Um, I just thought it'd be a little bit interesting and I did some detail work to add some like smaller crenellations. These are like little slits that you'd use to like throw rocks at people or something as they're trying to get onto your boat. And now we're moving on to the upper superstructure. So you can see I'm just extending out what I already built on the front, uh, just pushing it backwards. I added a little staircase on the side there and then I just added this big old lump. I don't know what this lump is, just a big camel's lump on the back. I kind of figured I was going to put a like detection tower on the top of it in the end. Um, but for now, it's just kind of there. And we're switching the view around to the bottom because it's time to just finish off this thing going to the bottom. You can see I start by just laying out all of the like inverted triangle pieces. And oops, looks like the water. The water's getting me. Okay, anyways, I put down the inverted triangle pieces and then fill it in with the regular triangle pieces. And then we just add in the slopes as necessary. And it got a little janky in the corner here, but I ended up making it work and I only had to deco one little corner. I just needed a two by two by one uh, inverted piece, which doesn't exist in front of the depth. So I had to deco it. And then we just fill in the bottom. And just like that, it is done. So welcome to my ship. Uh, we'll give it a little, give you a little tour. Uh, this is the final, well, not quite final, but this is what I was just building in the time lapse. Uh, so we'll go over a few notable features before we uh, get going here. So first of all, I'm gonna hop off and go down to the front of the ship. So as I mentioned, the, uh, there's some concern about this gun being too tall and poking out of its out of the deck too much. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and just dug in a hole so you can see it's kind of in this like hole um, this is very close but this is actually a valid like turret uh, rotation circle thing down here um, and you can see on the I've got this like slope uh, like wooden slope going up the sides here and on the back I have the slope and then it's also covered by this sort of catwalk deal over here so you can imagine if you're walking around here you got a little bit extra space to step on uh, this is my portcullis. It's just a deco, so you can walk through it. Uh, but I like it. It looks cool. The inside of the ship is completely hollow, by the way. Whoops. We're going over here. And as you can see, we've got our three uh, secondary weapons here. As you can see, they got their little carve-outs in the side there. Um, we've got these watchtowers, as you can see, with the pillars. This is the control room up here. You can see I did some deco work on the front window. The side windows are just copied from the Jormungand. Uh, and, and then this is the captain's seat. Uh, this is my temporary detection tower. I don't know if it's going to stay, but this is just a prefabbed one that I happen to have already. Uh, you can see there's this kind of like chapel looking structure on the back here. Another big window, which is the same window as the front here. We've got this cute little staircase just going up to the side there. We've got uh, the ballista. There's actually no missiles here yet, but the uh, Jormungand actually has a couple of missile bays, and I think they're shooting flares. I'm not really sure. I didn't look that closely, but I plan to put some missiles on here anyway. I don't know if it's flares or what just yet. Uh, you can see this is my hallway bridge thing. I don't know what the heck this is, but I kind of like it. You know, there's a big staircase going up, and then you go through here. And then there's staircase on the other side, door into the chapel. And you've got this like gateway bridge. You can stand up here and you know shoot your gun or whatever at whoever is approaching. On the back here, we have two more of these large guns. So you can see they're in their little wheel wells. There are, um, they are with their catwalks and everything. And on the side where the catwalk ends, it actually has a doorway into this like little watchtower uh, structure on either side. And then at the very back here, we've got the two smokestacks. Again, copied straight from the Jormungand. And then we just have four additional secondaries on the back. Now, I do have some concerns. First of all, this back area is kind of looking a little bland. 
the issue is this is only five blocks wide, uh, this area right here. So I don't really know what I can put here. So if you have any suggestions, put it in the comments. Um, I was thinking about just putting like a third smokestack or something right there. I don't know. It's kind of an awkward spot. Suggestions in the comments, please and thank you. Uh, and other than that, I'm actually really happy with the way this thing has turned out. Uh, it's obviously not done. The internals are completely empty. The wheels are not put on yet. There's also some obviously glaring issues around here. Uh, not all the deck is filled in and yeah, there's obviously issues, but this is a good step of a step in the right direction, I think. And uh, also I did not mention in the last video, but the deadline was actually extended to May 3rd. So I didn't miss the deadline. Um, but that means there's only a couple more weeks to do this. So I will see you guys back here for part three and part four uh, in a week and in two weeks time. Thank you for watching and